Hi all, welcome to my channel. Um, this is not going to be a voiceover video because that takes a lot of time, a lot of time to actually film and edit and everything. So this is just going to be a talking video. This video, I'm going to show you how I'm going to dress up for my cousin's wedding and the sort of makeup that I'm going to do. So if you want to know more about it, stay tuned. So we're going to start off with a primer. This time I'm going to be this video. I'm going to be using a lot of like fairly expensive products because I have it and I haven't used it in a long time because I don't go out much. So I'm going to be using like mostly high-end products and maybe some like uh, products that are available in India. So we're going to start off with the NARS primer. This is the Radiance primer. It's slightly pinkish and it gives a very luminous effect to the skin, and I really like it. I have normal to combination skin, sort of, because last year around this time I had really dry skin. Before that I've been having oily skin. And at that time my skin started to peel because I was using like really bad products on my skin. Since then it sort of underwent a reset. And now this is what I have. It's kind of normal, meaning it doesn't get too oily, it doesn't get too dry, but I do have some one or two dry patches here and there and sometimes I get oily. So um, I have uh, an Instagram and there I posted about how my Fenty foundation broke, the bottle broke and it shattered. So I have this um, Lacme Matrio Skin Natural Mousse thing, Lacme Absolute, must have seen this thing somewhere. I've stored it in here because the actual product in this one, the original product, the Lacme product is shit. And I really don't like it. So I stored it in here. And I'm, this is the uh, 290. I also have 310, which is safe. So I'm gonna apply the foundation on my face. And I'm gonna mix it in. I'm gonna drop this all over. Hopefully, I don't know. I mean, these foundations typically need um, a secure airtight bottle, otherwise, they will sort of decay or dry out, I don't know what. So I'm not really sure what the half-life of it right now is. Or the shelf life, whatever. Because it's not exposed to air, it's just sitting right out here in the open. And I actually don't know what to do about it. So, alright. I'm gonna go in with the 310, which is uh, warm, it's not olive, which means Basically, olive skin tone means, olive undertone means you have a slight bit of green running through. With warm skin tones, you have like anything from light peach to um, deep orange. And I have like, I don't have much of orange anything. It's mostly yellow, brown, and a bit of green. Which sounds weird, but that's what it is. That's what has fit me so far. So I'm just going to dot this one all over as well. and blend it in with my fingers. For foundations, I usually use my fingers. Foundations, concealers, all of these things, I usually use my fingers. It saves a lot of time, and I get to, I don't know, it just blends a lot better, if you ask me. Bring it down the chin. I don't like bringing it down my neck. I don't like the feeling of makeup on my neck. The color seems okay, okay, but we're going to give it a bit of time to set, so it will go darker, and that's actually what I like the most about this foundation. So next we're going to move on to concealer. I have the NARS concealer, and I have a slightly, this is too light for me, this is in the shade Ginger, and then I have a Wet n Wild Photo Focus concealer, and this is Medium Deep Tan. And this is almost my skin tone, so I'm going to mix these two and then apply it on my face. Okay, so the darker one is the Wet n Wild and the lighter one is NARS. I 
and I'm going to immediately set it with the Kat Von D powder. This is a huge jar, it's like a tub pretty much. And all of my makeup has been collecting dust because I don't use makeup that often. I'm going to take a really large fluffy blending brush to just go over it underneath my eye before it starts to crease. I am still on the lookout for um, what are these things called? Loose powders that are on the cheaper end and available in India because what will happen to me if I run out? You know what I mean? So I gotta look out for like backups and stuff. But most of the powders that I have tried, um, I wonder if they will have like flashbacks. Sure, it will keep me mad or whatever throughout the day, which I'm not that worried about. But like if I do end up taking flash photos, what then? This Kat Von D setting powder is slightly on the heavier side, but it does not give flashback. That I've noticed. So I'm going to apply it on my smile lines too. So now I'm going to move on to my brows. I have the, I have what I always use, Roof Proof Brow Pencil from Benefit, and this is number five. It's sort of a charcoal grayish color and it's great for filling in because it's not too dark or too like brown or whatever that it just looks weird it has a fat nib so it's great for filling in but you can't really draw hair strokes with it The foundation still feels a little bit wet, so I'm going to wait for it to set before I put it, put powder on it. You just have to wait for it to dry down a little bit. Like all of these liquid powders, you have to wait for it to dry down before forcing it to dry. So that's what I'm going to do. And next, we're going to go on to the eyes. And as a wedding guest, I'm just thinking of going for like a, a sort of a color winged liner with a bit of shimmer. Keep it like low key, use as few products as possible, keep the focus on the skin and that luminosity, the healthy looking skin thing. I have an eyeliner tutorial up, so if you want to see, you can go see that. Um, so I'm going to first off, I'm going to draw the eyeliner, then I'm going to put some color on top of it, I'm not sure which color just yet, and then I'm going to correct it or something. I'm not really sure what I'm going to do, but that's the kind of general idea I'm going for. Okay, let's see. So at this point, I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking I might go pink. What can I do? I might switch between the mauve obsessions and the warm brown obsessions. I have these smoky obsessions too, and I'm not planning on getting any of the other, the coral or the topaz or I don't know, whatever. I don't want to get any of those because like these three palettes pretty much cover everything you need. All right, let's just try this out and see where it goes. Hold on. Okay, I'm having the more obsessions out and I'm going to start off with this one. I'm going to list um, the colors I'm using over here. So when I say I'm going to be using like two by one color, it's going to be like two rows and the first color. So like second row, first column color. So that type of stuff. So I'm going to be using like second row, third column, two by three. This really nice rose color. The reason I put on my eyeliner first is, I don't know. I thought I was going to do something, but I ended up doing something else. If it does get covered up, you can easily put it on again. 
it's not that big a deal, it's not that deep. So we just we just try and see where this goes. I'm just gonna put this above my crease, so right in the side here, pull it up a little bit, and then go outwards. And then sort of drag it out. Never go like below the eyeliner, below that sort of guideline. I'm gonna do that here as well. One thing I've learned from doing makeup for the past like six, seven years, pretty much all myself, is that if you make a mistake on one eye, just replicate it on the other eye. If it looks symmetrical, it's gonna look fine. Even if it is like whatever. So I'm going to go with the 3x3, three three, so the last color here, and with the same 217 brush, just go right in here and sort of bring it out. Get some more color concentration on the outside, just pat it a little bit, and then do the same on the other. It's always best to go bit by bit because you can always tap these layers on but you can't really remove them off so even if you're going to I mean like it's sort of a commitment so to speak you know it's best to make smart commitments I'm going to go back to the rosy transition shade and sort of Pull the color in a little bit further. I'm going to take the large blending brush, go in with the 2x2, two two, which is the middle color here. Just go over everything. And then large buffing motion, buff everything up into the brows, even to an extent on the mobile eyelid. And do that on the other eye. So at this point, I feel like taking a bit of this, going into the warm brown palette, palette and taking the last two colors in the third row. So which it's like the, hold on, it's like a brown and a mid-tone brown together, just to bring some dimension and I'm putting this all over the mobile eyelid. So now we have a bit of purple, mauve and a little bit of a hint of red as well. So I'm thinking of going into this gold and going in with my finger to the center, going a little bit outward. Oh, that's nice. I thought of going low key, but here I am putting blue on my face. Oh. What to do? Not bad. For winging it, I don't do it.
See here the eyeliner, you can see like how the look itself is a bit more angular, whereas here it's a little more rounder. I mean, to me, it looks a little more rounder. That's because of my eye shapes themselves. Like, this is how it is. This is how it always looks. I think that's kind of enough for the top parts. Um, and for the bottom, I'm going to go back in, put a little bit of um, this rose color on the underneath. And then I'm going to take a MAC 219, I think. The thing has sort of like wiped itself off. This uh, pencil brush. I'm gonna go with these two. This one came out a lot more intense than I intended it to be. Mind you, I have my primer on, it's still like super intense. So I'm just gonna dab at it into the thing. Just so it can like blend into my skin a little bit more without being like too intense and too vibrant. Yeah, it looks fine now. So for the inner corner, I'm going to go in with this one. Except over here on the brush, let's see how it applies. Hmm. Nice. I like it. So I'm just going to put eyeliner on the lower lash line and I have this Glide Gel Liner from Enable, which is in the shade Dark Brown. <laughs> I'm just gonna focus on the skin here now. With glitter. I don't know, whatever. We are here, we are gonna deal with it. Oh my god, imagine if the bright has the same look. Oh, that would be weird. Okay, I have the shade from Ingla 301 eyeshadow. It's a nice um, sort of deep reddish. I don't know, man. It's just, it's a nice shade. I'm just going to put that a little bit on the inside wall. Sort of drag it the inside. Because this one has a tendency to look more round, I have to elongate it by putting a little bit of darker colors on the outside. Take a blending brush with nothing on it. Slightly lighten. I'm going to set the rest of my face because it feels a little um, not right still. I take the pack 245 brush. I'm going to get another one of this because this is a really, really nice brush. So I have the Too Faced Cocoa Contour Chisel to Perfection Face Contouring and Highlighting Kit. And this is medium to deep. I really like this one. This is a nice banana powder for highlighting underneath your eyes. Just use a little bit of it. I usually take the brush that came with it, it's nice, it's dense and it's synthetic too. Just go right in, tap off the excess, just 
stick to the outer part of the face. Might not look a lot in person, but this photographs really, really well. I'm gonna take the Coco Glow, which is this one. I don't use the deep mocha because it's too dark for me, which means if you're a lot darker than I am, you, and if you can get toothpaste, you should try it out. It's a nice palette. I'll apply some bronzer too because this is MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural in Dark. It's a good one. And I've had like, I've had most of these products for so long. Um, no, this is bringing me. I'm gonna go in with the Sleek Pink Sprint with a slightly darker color. It's almost, I think it's one of the shades that I put inside as well. So you can see. This one is highly pigmented, so dab on the excess of the arm, tap it, but I don't start in it. Just gonna go in with Worm from MAC. It's a matte color and it's a little, it has like a pink undertone. It's a nice one. That's fine. So I think that's it for today. I'll try for another low-key wedding guest tutorial, but I'm not gonna make any promises because I tried that today. And it's, it's great. It's nice. I like it. But maybe you can register for like grander wedding. I don't think this is going to be that grand. We'll see. We will see. This is part one. So, yeah. So, this is me with my hair down. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see in a couple of days. I'm gonna upload another one because I'm not fully satisfied with this. It's nice, but I'm not satisfied with it. So, a couple of days, stay tuned. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. Stay tuned.